Adelaide Lyle, Chapter 14 If somebody would have wanted to, after Christopher was born, they could have just stood by and watched Julie and Ben grow apart from each other real slow. It was like a tree had sprung up between them, a tree that was just too thick to throw their arms around. Julie had always been a strong Christian woman, and she got herself believing that her little boy's being touched was a gift from God. But Ben wasn't no mystic about it, and I reckon he saw his own quietness in that little boy's, and he loved him all the more because of it. He figured silence marked Christopher as being his son in a way their blood never could. But that tree grew up between them was just a gnarly old thing with thick roots that ran deep and wild and tore at the ground until it opened up. And once it did, Julie found herself clear across a great divide from Ben. So far apart, they couldn't even see each other from where they stood. Julie looked around and She saw she needed her faith to help her understand God's plan for that little boy and for her family. It was like Ben's worldliness inspired her, and his turning his back on God and the church worked on her belief and made it that much stronger. She never missed a chance to teach her boys a lesson about the Lord, especially after Jess was born. He was a curious thing. And once he lit into asking you questions about God and heaven and Jesus, well, you'd better have some answers ready or it just wouldn't do. But his daddy was something different altogether. There were two things that man just wouldn't talk about. His heavenly father and his own daddy. I reckon he figured that once he cut his ties with his earthly father, any substitute, whether holy or not, was going to be judged with the same thorough measure he judged just about everything else in his life. And Lord knows that when people don't get what they need, they take what they can find. And Julie was no different from most women about such a thing as that. What she found was a Christian family that welcomed her and her two little boys and never asked one question about why her husband wasn't joining the rest of his family on Sunday mornings at the church. I reckon it was just about good enough for her, but I know there were still times when that loneliness for the way her and Ben used to be would come over her, and with it come a fear of him that I just couldn't ever quite put my finger on. I ain't saying that Ben was the kind of man to hit a woman, because I can tell you that he wasn't. His daddy was, but Ben just didn't have it in him the way some men do. He wasn't the kind of man to let a woman get him riled up enough to go and make a scene and take to swinging his fists. But he was a brooding soul, and I believe the way he carried himself in all that quietness hurt Julie more than an open hand ever could. It got to where those two didn't hardly talk to each other at all, not even about the most important things married folks are supposed to share. Turns out that the tree I'd seen grown up between the two wasn't no tree at all. What I took for being roots were actually stories and lies and promises that festered deep into Julie's heart to where there wasn't anything anybody could do to pry them loose. Those thick limbs and branches that kept Julie and Ben from seeing each other when they needed to the most weren't nothing but arms and fingers that held Julie back, covered her eyes, and took her hand and led her to a place that she never had no intention of going. Looking back now, it wasn't no tree at all. It was Carson Chambliss.